The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was a young yeshiva boy, maybe he's 22 years old, marriageable age. He got corona right before Yom Kippur. So he goes to his rabbi and he says, I really want to go to shul on Yom Kippur. Rabbi says, I'm sorry, it's dangerous. And you can't go to shul on Yom Kippur. He goes to one of the big rabbis in Israel, his name is Rab Chaim Feinstein, probably related to Moshe Feinstein. He goes to the rabbi, he says, Rabbi, you don't understand. I need to pray in shul on Yom Kippur. I can't pray home alone. He says, why are you saying it with such desperation? He says, I'll tell you why. He says, I have four older siblings that are all single. Three sisters and one brother. He says, I have to pray on Yom Kippur in the proper setting. I need Hashem to hear my prayers. And so that he answered that, all these people have to get married. The rabbi said, I'm sorry, you can't put other people in danger. He says, but I need to pray. He says, I understand. But you got to let go of your prayer with a minyan or with a shul and pray at home. And the rabbi says, listen, he says, on Yom Kippur, I usually get maftir yonah. That's at the afternoon we read yonah in mincha. He says, after, after I get that aliyah, after I get maftir yonah, I'm going to say a misha berach for you and your siblings. And he did. During the winter, two of his older sisters got engaged. In the summer, his older brother got engaged. Erev Rosh Shana, his third sister got engaged. And Erev Yom Kippur, he got engaged. Come on, that doesn't even sound real, that story. I, I, it's, it's, it's hard to believe, but it's written all over the place. And like I said, the people are all alive. You know, if it was a hundred years ago, you could say, ah, it was exaggerated. But they're alive. They could see the story. You can't sketch it. Is that crazy? <laughs> I've mentioned to you before, I used a fake name named Jeffrey, but someone in the community who's helping a lot of people with medical. It's not hard at this point if you don't know who he is, your head is in the sand. But anyhow, this is a story that happened about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. A doctor calls up from the hospital, calls him up, says, Hi Jeffrey, there's this woman here in the hospital who's in terrible shape. She has COVID. And she has blood clots all over her body. There's almost nothing we can do. There's just one test item we could do that we really don't know if it's effective. It'll take a few days. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. This Jeffrey calls up a rabbi in the community who knows what's going, knows things. And he says, I heard this name. It's a name I never heard of before. Do you know anything about it? He says, yeah, I knew something about it. What happened was in this family is there were three brothers... And one brother passed away from COVID. And he left a widow. The other two brothers are in a financial fight with the widow. I don't know who's right. I don't know anything about the story. But they're in a financial fight with, with the widow. And they're not talking to her. It's a whole fight. Now, one of the brothers that's alive, he has COVID. And his wife is in the hospital with this serious case that you're talking about. So that's the story. He says, so Jeffrey says, but I need someone to sign off on this testing. So, okay, the one brother passed away. His wife is a widow. They're not talking to her. These, this, um, this guy has COVID. He can't come to the hospital for his own wife. So it has to be the one other brother is going to come to the hospital. Okay. Jeffrey then says, okay, calls up this brother. He says, you're going to come to the hospital. Then he conferences on the phone with the rabbi, this brother who's going to go to the hospital. He says, the situation with your sister-in-law is terrible. Here's what I need you to do. He says, you need Hashem's help now like you've never needed it before. He says, here's what I need you to do. You need to start the first step to peace. So here's what you have to do. You're going to write out a check for $100,000. And you're going to deliver it to the rabbi's house. And the rabbi is going to deliver it to your widowed sister-in-law. And you're going to start the process of peace. The man gets off the phone. The rabbi calls Jeffrey and says, Jeffrey, you're out of your mind. You have no idea how bad this situation is. It's never happening. You're nuts. Ten minutes later, $100,000 check was delivered to the rabbi's house. 
Two rabbis went to the widow's house. She had a candle. It was about a year ago right now. She had a candle in memory of Chalmah Jai Yosef. And they delivered the check to her. She starts crying. The three of them sit there, say a chapter of Tehillim for her sister-in-law, who's in the hospital. 20 minutes later, the doctor calls up and says, all the clots are gone. Again, I can't make up stories like that. I feel like a lawyer. You'd say it's not even... I'm talking to the person who watched every step. Because you see, the world, what Hashem puts us here for, is to let go. And sometimes it's a mini thing. Sometimes you just have to let go of a parking spot in a small moment. And sometimes it's a major part of you. But it's difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. But when you do and you have the trust that to go to wherever Hashem is going to take you, after that, the promise is you will feel, you will experience, you will see the blessing. It may happen tomorrow. It may be more difficult before it gets easy. But eventually, you'll look back and say, this Lech Lecha was worth it. Thank you. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.